Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Read as Fiction. The last episode was cut in the confrontation scene between Lillian and Samantha. I'm not sure why, but I think it's because of a limitation in the recording software that I'm using. But anyways, let's continue. I do try. I have been trying, but it's hard. You... You just don't understand, Lillian. You don't know how sick I am. I felt awful for a long, long time. Longer than I can even remember. And I just... I don't know what to do anymore. That is precisely why, Sam. I understand you well enough, but I can never know how sick you are. We're just too dissimilar. I think our friendship was a bad idea. I am not good for you, and you are not good for me. All we do is hurt each other. It would be sensible to bring things to an end before it goes any further. I am not too prideful to admit when I'm out of my bed. I can't deal with you anymore. Lily, I... I... I see you didn't get lost after all. Um, well, I did get lost, but I had help. Lillian found me and brought me here. Lillian, huh? It's nice to see you. The pleasure is all mine. It was lucky that Samantha found you. It's nice to know she has a friend who's so reliable. As the head of the student council, it is my duty to ensure the safety of my fellow students. I was simply doing my job, so there's no need to compliment me. Sam? 
Are you alright, Sam? You look as though you've been crying. I... um... Lillian and I, we had a talk, but Lillian decided that we were incompatible. Incompatible? That's right. I, well, at least I know where I should stand now. You were right, Roberta. All this time, you were right. I was the fool for not believing you. Oh, Sam. You silly girl. I told you this would happen. I know, but I kept on hoping. Now I realize I was wrong. Sammy, poor thing. I hope you're pleased with yourself, Lillian. You just alienated the one person in the world who loves you the most. It was not with malicious intent, I promise you. It was for her own good. Then why did you make her cry so much? How could that be for the greater good? I did it because I cared about her. If you keep pandering to her like that, she will not get better. Sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and inform Miss Pope. But Samantha and I have returned, as it appears Samantha is in no fit state to tell her herself. That girl, you have no idea what you see in her. Well, she, she's very smart, and she's so forthright too. She never tells lies to make other people feel better. She always says exactly what she thinks. And is that really such a good thing? I don't know, maybe. Perhaps people should be hard on me more often. Just as how you were this morning. I probably deserve it. Look, Sam, I am sorry about that. Why are you sorry? Weren't you telling the truth? I was, but I should have handled it more delicately. I was being unfair. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you, Roberta. I'm sorry if I've been taking you for granted. You, you're a far better friend than I deserve.
maybe this is the part where I will choose who Samantha's love interest will be. So, what do you guys think? Maybe I should save here so I can go back to it later. Okay, I'll do that. Is it your allergies? Are they playing up? That's right. I thought they would die down in the winter. And they did for a while, but they've been getting worse again. I suppose spring really is around the corner. <sighs> spring should be such an enchanting season, but there's just so much pollen everywhere. The English countryside is the worst for it. It's at times like this, I'm glad I live in London. Well, if your eyes start to water, you shouldn't rub them. That will only make it worse. I know that, Samantha. I've had to deal with my hay fever all my life, whilst you've only had to deal with it, whilst you've been friends with me. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Anyway. You seem somewhat restless. You haven't eaten very much either. Are you feeling alright? I'm not hungry. This food killed any appetite I may have had. Well, that's certainly true. You should try to eat more though. We have a busy day tomorrow. We'll be doing a lot of walking.
Hey, look what I found. What is it, Byron? You'll never guess Bobby, my friend. I was just rippling through the scuffboard and I found this. What are you doing? I haven't finished unpacking my clothes yet. You'll get them dirty. But I'm all the way over here and you're all the way over there. Lighten up, Bobby. That isn't the point. You should show some more respect for other people's things. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Don't yeah, yeah, whatever me. This is serious. And so is this. Look. Oh, fine then. Not the game of life. Yes, the game of life. Isn't it great? It's terrible. No wonder it got left behind here. It's so tedious. Kind of like life itself, huh? Haha, <laughs> very funny. At least, it isn't as dull as risk. We agree on precious little, but you have to at least concede on this point, Bobby. I happen to like risk. Of course you do. I shouldn't be so surprised. A dull old mate like yourself would like a dull old game. Who are you calling old? I'm not that much older than you. I think the game of life is depressing. Depressing. It's all about money. Whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins. Don't you think that's a rather mercenary way of looking at things? It might be mercenary, but... That's just the way life is. Don't say that's the way life is as though it makes it so, Georgia. But it's true. You're such a capitalist. We live in a capitalist society. What else can I do? It's eat or be eaten out there. You better buck your ideas up, Percy, before I take a bite out of you. Cut that out! Anyway, I hope those lofty morals of yours won't dissuade you from having a game with me. Why do you even want to play the game of life, all things? It doesn't really suit your image. You seem to be the type who would enjoy chess more. Or a Cluedo. Although I do like Kudo, Kudo isn't here. We'll have to make do with this instead. You're saying this like we don't have a choice. We don't. I'm bored and I want to play something. Unless you would rather do truth or dare, Bobby. I already told you not to call me Bobby and we're not playing truth or dare. It's so infantile. Huh? So that's the, does that mean you have a lot of deep dark secrets hidden away behind that pretty face of yours? I don't have any secrets, dark or otherwise. I'm just too old to play these silly, silly 
children's slumber party games. Especially with a person like you. Somebody's touchy. And whose fault do you think that is? <laughs> you're that afraid you're going to lose, huh? not especially not as a game of life even a blindfolded monkey could play that it's just luck then why don't you give it a shot fine but just once and this is only so i can wipe that smug smile of your face have to pick our car. What color do you prefer, Bobby? You know what, Georgia? What? I honestly don't care at all. Well, I'm going to have red. You can have orange, Bobby. Why orange? Because of your hair. It's orange, right? Like goldfish colored. My hair isn't goldfish colored. It's ginger. Then do you want him? Do you want me to call you ginger nut? No. I had enough of that in primary school, and I thought you, of all people, would be able to come up with something more biting than that. Um, I I'm going to have the white car. You would choose white, wouldn't you? What does that mean? It means that you're a pure girl, Percy. Good job. I'm sure Harry will be very happy. You feel like you're making fun of me. Then... I'll take blue. We need to take a person peg. Is there any reason why you want to play as a man? Who says blue is a boy's color? Girls can wear blue too. Just look at their uniforms. You know what I mean. In these infantile games, blue always equates to being a male. Maybe I just felt like a change. Sometimes I wish I'd been born a boy. Life would have been easier then. Then you should start taking feminism a bit more seriously. It certainly is true that there's a difference between the wages men and women receive and women experience harassment based on their gender on a daily basis. It just isn't fair. I don't know why you keep on telling me this stuff, Percy. It's cute that you're so enthusiastic, but I honestly don't care. What? But you... you just 
say you think men have it easier. I think they often do, but I don't care about that enough to get all worked up like you perceive. What's the point? It's not going to change anything. Georgia, that attitude isn't going to get you anywhere. If everybody thought like that, then nothing would get done at all. We'd still be sitting in our amphitheaters, watching slaves fend off hungry lions. You are being too generous, Percy. I don't think mankind has progressed nearly as much as you may think it has. Rather than putting servants to death, you have simply found new scapegoats for imagined crimes. That's what I'm telling you. That's exactly why you should care. I do care, but I don't see the point in complaining. It doesn't help. People can convince themselves that their righteous indignation is some kind of worth all day long for all I care, but I know it isn't true. The only way to truly achieve change in this world is through brute force and not nagging. That's so cynical. It's because of people like you that the Tories kept keep getting voted in. I'm not even old enough to vote yet. That's beside the point. Don't you care about anybody other than yourself? Oh, I don't be like that. I care about you, don't I? In your own Georgia, anyway, I suppose. Well then, here's no problem. So ladies, shall we begin? Hey Bobby, it's time to pay up. Why are you suing me? I don't even have that much money. Chris is the one who's spinning, not me. That may be true, but... I like Chris more than I like you, Bobby. Therefore, I'm suing you. You have a problem with that? So you're willing to sacrifice your own chances of victory just to make things more difficult for me? That's about the gist of it, yes. Well, at least you're honest. I don't know if that makes it any better though. Thank you kindly. Oh, now it's my turn. You go on holiday to Italy. Pay 10,000. Hmm. Doesn't that seem a bit steep for a holiday? Yes, but it doesn't specify how long you're in Italy for. For all we know, you could have stayed there for years. I suppose so. I don't know if the hot weather would be good for my skin though. It might not be good for my children either. You don't have any children. They're just plastic pieces. Right now perhaps, but someday. Do you want to be a housewife that much? I wouldn't mind it. Huh. <laughs> don't snort like that, Georgia. I love children. They're just so cute with their button noses and tiny fingers. And screaming mouths and flaming limbs. Rashes and scabs and dirty nappies. Uh, I would rather die than have children. It would ruin my figure too. There are more important things in life than your figure, Georgia. Why do you look so gloomy? 
The birth of a child should be a joyous occasion. I would be joyous if I had money. We have to give you money for each child you have though. Yes, but that won't be enough to pay for their education. all these children. This was such a bad idea. Roberta? Yes? If I give you a couple of my children, would you look after them for me? I realize this may sound like a detriment, but in the game of life, Having more children is a boon. We stand to benefit a great deal from this arrangement, given you can collect money on all their, on their lives at the end of the game. It's called forward thinking. The only thing I ask in exchange is a mere trifle, something I'm sure a goodly woman such as yourself can part with, Bobby. All I want is a little bit of money for your generosity to tide me over. Do these terms sound acceptable? Would you be willing to help a friend in need? You must be willing, for you have proven yourself time and time again to be such a reliable friend. You would expect nothing less of you, Roberta. Are you trying to sell your own children? Yes. That is so, though I wish I had not come to this, desperate times call for desperate measures. I fear I can't afford to look after them, given my, my current circumstances. They will starve, Roberta. Do you truly want the debt of my children weighing up upon your conscience? You can prevent this tragedy if only you open your heart and your wallet too. Be that as it may, it is against the rules. You can't sell your children to other players in a game of life. But, there are no buts. You made your grave and now you must lie in it. But I'm a terrible mother. If you won't look after my children, Roberta, at least do the de decent thing and call the authorities. I can't go here. I'm sorry, Sam, but board games have rules for a reason. If we start ignoring them willy-nilly, who knows what it, what might happen? Who knows what might hap might happen indeed? Honor key, no doubt. And you would love that, wouldn't you? Anyway. Bobby has a point. You gave birth to all those kids, Sam, and now you have to face the consequences. Isn't that why you wanted to be a man, Georgia? So you'll never have to face the consequences of your things? Maybe. In the game, though, I only have two children. I'm a responsible father. I wonder. Just how many poor women have been? Have you have left desolate and heartbroken after one night stand that meant nothing to you but everything to them? Who knows? I'm devilishly attractive after all. You're not when you boast like that. Oh, I thought women found self esteem attractive in men. But you aren't a man. I would be a terrible parent whether I was a man or a woman. Well, I can't argue with that one. You're so cruel, Roberta. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It's 
not like it matters. The game of life is all based on luck anyway. And luck is a skill, no different to any other. Luck is not a skill. Not unless you were tampering with the spinner somehow. My my. Do you really think I do something so underhanded? If it's you? Yes, I think you would. Over a petted children's game like this. You said it yourself, Bobby. The game of life is silly. Don't you think you're taking this too seriously? Well, you may have won the game of life, but we'll see about reality. You're terrible with money. You'd never be able to raise that much without spending it at all. Of course. What is the point in living if I can't lavish myself with fine things? It's only what I deserve. You really are a capitalist. What did you expect? I am a lady. It would be a hypocritical of me to act otherwise, wouldn't it? I highly doubt you care about what other people think, Georgia. At least you don't come in last, Roberta. Isn't that some small consolation? I did far worse than you. Don't worry about it, Sam. You are playing against me. It's only natural you would lose. All of a sudden, I'm finding it hard to breathe. Are you alright? Would you like me to open a window? No, it isn't that. It must be because this room is so crowded. Crowded? Yes. With Georgia's massive ego. That was rather a quick retort from you, Bobby. What do you mean for me? Oh, I don't know. I always beg you as being rather dim witted after all. Maybe I should annoy you more if it can inspire such criticisms. Please don't, for your own sake. If you annoyed me further than you do already, I fear I would strangle you. Oh, how scary. And speaking of scary things, don't you think this is the perfect place for that? For what? Ghost stories, of course. Ghost stories. Why ghost stories? Is this another one of your whims? It isn't a whim, my dear Bobby. It's destiny. The setup couldn't be better. It's dark outside and we're alone in the middle of the countryside with nary a soul to hear, you, to hear us. Save our other classmates in their own respective rooms, of course. Che. Way to kill them with Bobby. I'm just being sensible. Why are you so obsessed with the macabre anyway? I think it's quite tasteless. That's because you're a dry, passionless woman who doesn't understand true excitement. You are a spinster in the body of a young girl. If disliking senseless gore makes me dry and passionless, so be it. Oh, that sounds like fun. I wanna join in. You too? Yes, of course. I agree that horror can be somewhat sensationalized with all its fainting women in sheer nightgowns. Most of it is grounded not in human emotion but in attempts to shock. I suppose it, it's not always the most sophisticated genre, and its worst can be incredibly tasteless, but I quite like it regardless. I think it's quite captivating. I... Mm, I agree with Samantha. You do? Yes. I also enjoy horror stories to a certain degree. You don't look like the kind of person who would. Not with all that blonde hair. 
Looks can be deceiving. Is it that common theme in horror stories? Doppelganger? And again with the German. You act as though I have something said something obscure, Alberta. Is a well known face. Just the person you once thought you knew that you could trust turns out to have a secret identity. One you never thought one you never could have fathomed. Horror seeks to explore the dark depths of human hearts, the parts of ourselves buried deep inside us all, that we may not even know exist. Actually, I was trying to write a poem about it. I could recite some of it to you if you like. Go ahead. Even I am intrigued. Okay guys, let's end this episode right here. Hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>